Here I'm going to show that if events A and B are independent, then so are A complement and B. And so are A and B complement, since we can easily switch the roles of A and B. We need to show that if A and B are independent, then so are A complement and B. And so by our definition of independence, we need to show that if the probability of the intersection of A and B equals the product of the probabilities of A and B, then the probability of the intersection of A complement and B equals the product of the individual probabilities. This makes intuitive sense from a conditional probability argument. Recall that if A and B are independent, then the probability of A given B equals the probability of A. In other words, knowing that event B occurs does not change the probability of A. Well, if knowing that event B occurs doesn't change the probability of A, then it stands to reason that knowing B occurs doesn't change the probability of A complement. But let's see if we can show that formally. We could try various approaches to show this, but the one that jumps out to me is to start with the probability of the intersection and see if we can turn that into the product of the individual probabilities. Let's try that. The first step is the key part of this proof. We want to express this in terms of A and B, at least initially, so that we can use the fact that A and B are independent. How would we do that? Well, it's simplest if we recognize that the probability of the intersection of A complement and B is the probability of B minus the probability of the intersection of A and B. To illustrate that, let's consider a Venn diagram, with the circle on the left representing event A and the circle on the right representing event B. The overlap of the circles represents the intersection of A and B. The part of B outside of the intersection we might call just B, and it is the intersection of B with A complement. In other words, the intersection of B with everything outside of A. Similarly, the region that is just A is the intersection of A with B complement. If we focus in on B, we see that B is made up of two regions, its intersection with A and its intersection with A complement. So B is the union of these two regions. And since these two regions are mutually exclusive, the probability of B is the sum of the probability of A intersect B and the probability of A complement intersect B. We simply rearrange that in the first step of the proof. We see now that our expression includes the probability of the intersection of A and B. This is useful because we can now invoke our premise that A and B are independent by swapping the probability of the intersection for the product of the individual probabilities. These two terms both include the probability of B, so we can factor that out. We're left with the probability of B times 1 minus the probability of A, which is, of course, the probability of B times the probability of the complement of A. And that completes the proof. We just showed that if A and B are independent, then so are A complement and B. And since our choice of which event we call A and which we call B is completely arbitrary, we could switch the roles of A and B and say that A and B complement are independent as well. As a quick note to finish, it is also true that if A and B are independent, then so are their complements. We could show that by using the method we used here a second time, but I take a more direct approach to that proof in another video.